Now, I wanted to mention also a, a war criminal in this country, a, a part of the fifth column of fascism in this column, not a fifth column for Russia, but a fifth column for fascism, or just a direct up front uh, example of uh, fascism. That's Coke Industries. That's the conglomerate run by this neo-fascist billionaire Charles Koch. Um, you've heard me talk about him a hundred times. You know you have your own information about him. This guy is a real son of a bitch. I mean, just an absolute fascist Christian of the worst, the worst sort. But he has numerous ongoing business operations in Russia, which makes sense when you think about it. And ever since Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Coke Industries and this pig, Charles Koch, have given no indication that those business operations have been suspended or would be. On the contrary, um, as Judd Legum at Popular Information puts it, the limited public comments made by Koch's subsidiaries operating in Russia indicate that their business activities are going to continue. Now, I've mentioned to you before this website, Popular Information, run by Judd Legum. Um, I hope you have found it, and I hope you've put it into your favorite places, uh, uh, gloss, or, um, uh, collection of places where you can just click on and, and go read some of this stuff. But he cites Guardian Industries, not, not the Guardian newspaper, but Guardian Industries. It's a wholly owned subsidiary of Coke Industries. And it's a manufacturer of industrial glass and other products. It's based in Auburn Hills, Michigan, not far from that nest of fascist Christians at Hillendale, Michigan. But this company has production facilities around the world. Now, they have two glass production plants that operate in Russia. One facility is in Ryazan, Russia, about 120 miles southeast of Moscow. And according to a press release, the company added, quote, a new jumbo laminated glass production line to that facility last August. Another facility is located in Rostov, Russia, near the border with Ukraine. That plant, the Rostov plant, which began operations about 10 years ago, costs a quarter of a billion dollars to build and produces what is described on the website as, quote, Guardian's high-performance, energy-efficient Climaguard glass products for construction of homes, offices, retail, health care, and other facilities. It also claims to be capable of producing 900 tons of glass per day. Wow. Um, in 2011... Coke industry said this about uh, this particular operation, quote, Guardian is bullish on Russia, given the excellent growth at our first plant in Ryazan and the customers we have in this country. The timing is right for the region and for Guardian. End quote. Sounds like your usual corporate blur bullshit, you know, when a new plant is about to open, right? But this one's in Russia. And earlier this month, March, a spokesperson for this Coke Enterprises company indicated that employees are continuing to work after the invasion of Ukraine. The head of corporate communications at Guardian provided this statement on March 4th, quote, Guardian Industries continues to closely monitor the tumultuous events in Eastern Europe, supporting our employees who are affected. The health and safety of our employees and all personnel working in our facilities is our first priority. Don't laugh. Just more corporate bullshit transposed into Russia speak. So Jug... Judd Legum at Popular Information, he got in uh, touch with Guardian. I remember where they're located in Michigan. And he got in touch with them both directly and through Coke Industries and requested comment on Guardian's operations in Russia, given what Putin has done. And I'm sure you can 
guess, you're way ahead of me. The company just more or less told him to fuck off. They didn't respond. Um, now, we know by now, because of what has been in um, popular media, that hundreds of international companies have suspended or closed completely their operations in Russia. Uh, the, the objective being trying to push, uh, pressure Putin to end this murder spree in Ukraine through uh, economic isolation. And Koch Industries, though, this Nazi fuck in this country, Charles Koch, has taken a different tack, a different course. Um, there's a company in Russia, a Koch subsidiary called Molex, M-O-L-E-X, this is all according to Judd. It's an electronic components manufacturer that was acquired by Coke Industries in 2013. Molex offers its products through a network of third-party distributors across Russia uh, and offers a version of its corporate website in Russian. And it has posted two letters regarding the continuity of their business in Eastern Europe. The first letter... February 25th, says the company is, quote, monitoring the ongoing developments between Russia and Ukraine, and the company is actively monitoring our existing land, sea, and air carriers with routes traversing Ukraine and Russia. Route adjustments have been initiated to mitigate product disruptions between Molex and our customers. You notice there is no mention of the death and the destruction. Just Coke Industries saying, hey, not to worry, if you're one of our customers, we, we figured out different routes to get our shit to you. And the second letter was posted just 10 days ago. It's identical to the first, except it says, where it says ongoing developments between Russia and Ukraine, that's been changed to ongoing developments in Eastern Europe. The words Russia and Ukraine also were, were removed from the, from the header of the letter. This is, how, this is how fascist Christian censorship works. This is how it works. So Judd, at Popular Information, he contacted Molex, both directly and through Coke Industries, and requested comments. The company did not respond. Well, of course not. And then you have Coke Glitch, one of a series of affiliated companies that operate as Cloak, Coke Engineered Solutions in Russia. The company has a history of using um, creative practices to avoid sanctions, to evade sanctions. When the U.S. government banned American companies from selling materials to Iran, Coke used subsidiaries in Germany and Italy to continue selling its products. See, Coke doesn't give a fuck about the United States. It is a fascist Christian organization. George Bentu, a former sales engineer for this company, told Bloomberg News, quote, those sales continued until 2007. Every single chance they had to do business with Iran or anyone else, they did. Of course. Neither Coke Glitch or Coke Engineered Solutions has publicly commented on the Russian attack on Ukraine, and several requests for comment by Popular Information and Judd Legum were not returned. Um, and then the, the, the Coke's Indifference to Russian human rights violations uh, did cause a controversy at the Atlantic Council. That's an elite think tank based in Washington, D.C. Um, and according to what Judd wrote here, the trouble started when two Atlantic Council experts, Emma Ashford and Matthew Burroughs, wrote an article arguing that, quote, the United States should not focus on human rights in its dealings with Russia, <laughs> end quote. The piece went on to argue that the United States should not have imposed sanctions on Russia in response to the uh, uh, Kremlin's poisoning and attempted assassination of Alexei Navalny. Now, these people uh, operate in the United States. Are you fucking? I, I mean, so more than 20 Atlantic Council staffers published a response criticizing this piece. One of the signatories 
to the criticism of the piece, told Politico that, quote, they worried the article was influenced by a four and a half million dollar donation over five years to the Atlantic Council from Charles Koch. This is what this pig son of a bitch Nazi does with his billions. He buys silence. Now, not long after the donation, uh, the, uh, the, the person who, who was the lead author of the piece arguing against uh, what these two assholes said, um, that person joined the Atlantic Council from, quote, the Koch-funded libertarian think tank, the Cato Institute, end quote. Now, I don't know if you knew the Cato Institute is also funded by the Koch brothers. They claim to be um, libertarian. They're not. They're fascist, fascist Christian. So today, all sorts of Koch subsidiaries continue to do business with Russia, uh, even as uh, Putin's military continues to slaughter innocent people in that country. It's incredible. Incredible. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts. So you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.